Honored to be with you. So tell me what your conclusions are to the extent that you can from what you heard yesterday. Well, of course, after 50 plus testimonies that were given, a lot of views, a lot of concerns. And I think the agreement is we've got to do something. We're, we're sitting here and looking at the different options they've told us from industry and individuals. But we have a risk in our nation of uh, turning back from the being the energy exporter to the world, number one in the world exporter, the United States, uh, just behind us are Russia and Saudi Arabia. And of course, OPEC decided they didn't like that and came after us on a one punch. And then this pandemic came through and shut down the use of oil and gas worldwide. So the industry is suffering. And what we yesterday heard from is a desperate industry, many small families that are losing jobs, literally hundreds of thousands that will lose jobs unless we stabilize something or come to some rescue. Yeah, as you said, a desperate industry. I mean, there was some incredible testimony yesterday. Diamondback Energy basically said, you know, if you make us cut, we're just going to cut all the way to zero because we can't be viable in that kind of environment. We're talking about putting jobs at risk and so forth. You know, they're against the idea that you should do something, as you just said. What kind of options are we talking about? Are, are you coming? Are we, we've spoken to your colleague, Ryan Sitton, who did seem to support the Pioneer and Parsley proposal. Are you saying you might support that as well, or would your action take a different form? Well, any option is there. We're looking at all of the options. There have been no decision made, and until we three get together and make a decision, there is no decision of the agency. But what I'm looking at is what are our options? And even the presentation of limiting the production, we need to do that nationwide. Texas is 40% of the production in the United States. And in the world, we're only 5%. So to really be effective, a lot of the testimony said we need the cooperation of other states. I am a member appointed by Governor Abbott to the Interstate Oil and Gas Compact Commission, which are the 31 states that regulate energy in the United States and in Canada. And uh, we need their cooperation, plus the federal government. So we need to act as an entire nation on this if we're going to act economically against forces worldwide. Right. But the, it does come down to the three of you right now. It's amazing. You guys had over 20,000 people tuned into your virtual meeting yesterday from Texas, from across the country, from around the world, because everyone's pointing the finger at you to say, is American production going to agree uh, to a cut? Now, there are some who say, look, we could kind of unofficially do this by limiting natural gas flaring, uh, for instance. Would you consider something like that as a method of basically trying to trim overall production? Frankly, I think that's a separate environmental, uh, definitely a, a, good, a good issue that we, we are addressing at the Railroad Commission or looking at ways to address flaring. But really, I think that's a side issue. When you cut back production, you're going to cut down the amount of flaring. That's happening as we speak. So right now, that's not the main issue. The main issue is we need the dollar of the uh, barrel of oil back up so that our companies can continue and we don't lay off workers and destroy what has been uh, the revamping of not only energy security in the United States, for the first time in 70 years, we're an energy exporter in the United States to the rest of the world. That's at risk. Uh, we have families, thousands of families that are making a living from this. We have energy security. And more important, for the first time, we are now have national security secure. The, the amount of discoveries in America, in Texas, are phenomenal. Worldwide, our, our ambassadors worldwide have said we have negotiated different because of the discoveries of oil in the United States. Yeah. And under attack from OPEC for this shell play that has made energy number one in the United States. You know, these comments from uh, Texas State Representative Lyle Larson were pretty stark. He said uh, the idea of, of cuts is arrogant and condescending to every Texan. The most un-American thing we've heard in Texas in the last 50 years. Please drop any consideration of socializing Texas oil today. What's your response to that? And again, are you guys basically, you think, on the cusp of allowing, agreeing, or imposing ter uh, quotas across Texas oil production? Definitely. It's one option that we're considering. As you said, it was one of the testimonies. But we set through 10 and a half hours of suggestions. And all of those are on the table. And Lyle is a great friend, a great uh, representative there in Austin. And we certainly listened to his uh, recommendation. And all of it we put together to come up with what's right for Texas and working together with other states for America. All right. Well, it sounds to me like you guys are considering it. We know the big meeting is on Tuesday. Uh, we'll see what comes out of that and if there's any, uh, you know, if that's even enough at this point to support the oil price. Uh, but Wayne Christian, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much.